Hello. All right. I get often questions about reverb. What's the best way to put reverb? And of course, there's the simplest way of just putting a reverb plugin right on a track but there's another method uh, we call it send return routing configuration that's a really long phrase but um, easy to do so here's the first and quickest way that you might apply reverb to a track I've got a drum track here with three different percussion tracks oops solo it up let's listen to it so a drum loop three different percussions and the percussions have a little bit of processing on them. Not much, though. I want to add a little reverb to them. So one way to do that, I'll use these um, drums, this conga is right down here. One way to add reverb, of course, is to put a reverb plug-in directly on the track. I'm using one of the inserts on that actual track. And I'm going to select the old trusty D-verb. And um, one of the first things I do when I use Dever, for whatever reason, the gain is down by 4 dB. I usually turn that up. And of course, that's optional. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then whatever reverb I want in terms of reverb length. So when you're using a reverb, basically you're, you're emulating or you're creating a room or a space. And you'll notice that all the presets here are based on rooms or halls or churches or some, some sort of you know, physical space that you're trying to emulate. And of course, there's a bunch of presets that you can use as well. So I'll put this reverb directly on the track. And one of the things I want to do you'll notice that it sounds really far away and really large and that might be the sound that you want but the way you want to kind of control that a little bit is using the mix level and I'm mixing between the dry signal which is no reverb whatsoever and just the percussion all the way to the wet signal which is basically just full-on reverb so usually you want to find a nice happy uh, you know compromise between those two depending on the sound that you want you can blend the mix to whatever you desire to get reverb on that particular track now I could put a reverb uh, plug in on each one of these tracks and that would be fine there's nothing wrong with that um, one way to look at another method of using the reverb is in that space that you're trying to create with the reverb. You're creating a room, whether it's a small room or a church or a hall or whatever. You're typically trying to put all of these instruments in this case, or maybe it's vocals. You want to put all of these voices in the same room. So how do you do that? Uh, it's really easy to do. So I'm going to take this plug in off. And um, I'm going to create a new stereo aux track. And I'm going to name it Reverb. And I'm going to put my Reverb plug-in on this aux track. And I'll use the same trusty D-verb. This is the stock Pro Tools Reverb. And again, I'm going to take the gain up to zero. And in this case, I'm going to leave the mix at 100% reverb. I'm going to be able to achieve that balance between dry and wet signals through another method. So in this case, I am going to create a send on that uh, percussion track. Instead of the insert, I'll go to a send. And I'm going to choose a bus. So I'm going to choose any available bus. I'll choose five and six. What the heck? I'm going to rename it. And I'm going to call it verb. Whoops. Right. And then on the input of the stereo aux track that I just created, I'm going to assign that same bus. Now, remember, a bus is just like a, a hose for audio. In this case, it's a stereo hose, two channels. I'm sending audio from the percussion track via this send over to this aux track that has the reverb on it. So let me assign that bus to verb. And I have the floating send window here, but I'm going to close that. I want to use the expanded send view. So I'm going to command click on A, or you can go up to view, expanded sends, and choose the send there. And now I've got the little mini fader there. And this is going to allow me to send a little, a medium, or a lot amount of that percussion into the reverb track. I'm going to solo safe this reverb, I'm going to command click on a Mac, and I think it's uh, Windows key click on uh, Windows. 
and um, solo up my percussion as I bring this up. So the dry signal of the percussion is coming from the main track itself where the percussion is. And the send allows me to choose how much of that percussion track I want to send into the reverb. And the reverb aux track is returning that reverb back into the session, right? So the cool thing about this is that I can add other instruments into this same reverb really easily, right? So if I want to bring in this other percussion, now let's listen to that for a second. I want to put reverb on that as well. I'm going to uh, create a send and assign it to the same verb bus. Bus and verb. And of course, I'm going to expand that view. Oops, I got to open up the track height a little bit. There we go. And now I have both percussion tracks going into the same reverb or the same room. Uh, let me, I got one more. Let's see what we got here. I'm gonna put some reverb on that as well. We'll do the same bus. And let me open up the track height a little bit so I can see the fader. Now the cool thing about this, there's, there's a few different advantages of this. I have a lot more control on a per track basis, so I want to bring all of these in. They're all going into the same reverb. And in terms of resources for my system, I'm using a single reverb and I'm sending three tracks into it, which you know computers nowadays can, nowadays can handle multiple reverbs. It's not a big problem, but if you were to put a reverb on many, many vocal tracks, for example, and percussion and instrument tracks, reverbs can be uh, taxing to your system and uh, they can you know make your system um, struggle with a larger session with a lot of reverbs. This way you can use fewer number of reverbs uh, without compromise. You get reverb on all the tracks that you want, but you're using fewer plugins to get to it. So I'm going to unsolo all these tracks. And last but not least, if I want to put reverb on the actual drum loop as well, And if I want to put them all into a different size room, and now I also, using that aux send, I have kind of a master volume control for the reverb. There's no reverb. So I have control over all of the reverbs going to all four tracks at the same time. And there you have the reverb send return config. Same thing applies for delays. Let's do the same thing, but with a delay plugin. So I've got reverb, but I want to add delay to these as well. So I'm going to create a new stereo aux input, just like we did a second ago for the reverb. But I'm going to name this delay. And I'm going to assign an input to that stereo aux, another available bus. I'll choose 17 and 18. Doesn't matter which one, just one that's available. Rename it. And I'm going to call this one Delay Bus. And I need to put a delay plugin on this track. So in this inserts column, I will choose Delay. I'm going to do Mod Delay 3. There's my plugin. It's a stereo delay left and right. And I've got my reverb uh, uh, sends visible or expanded, I should say. I'm going to go to view and I'm going to deselect send A and I want to open up send B. That's what we're going to use for the delay sends. And uh, I will create a send going to. What did I say? Delay bus. There, that's what we named it. There's my send. All right, and by default, the send is all the way off. I have to remember to solo safe the delay track. 
So I'm going to command click on it on a Mac or on a Windows machine. I will. And let's start playback. I'm going to mute the reverb for a second. And of course, we want to change that delay setting. that preset and I can add a little less of the percussion going to the delay and uh, I want to add uh, delay to the clove here so I'm gonna create the same bus delay bus solo that up Bring the reverb back in. And uh, let's put a little delay on this percussion track here. It's like a shaker. Delay bus. And once again, I'm using a single delay plugin for multiple tracks. I'm sending the, all three of those tracks or a portion of those tracks into this delay. The dry signal of those percussion tracks are coming in through the, you know, the main volume of the percussion track itself. The send is sending a little bit of each of those tracks over to the delay aux track and that delay aux track is returned, bringing those delay enhanced percussion tracks back into the session. Uh, now, this is a method that you would use quite frequently for reverb or delay or time-based effects. I probably wouldn't do this send-return thing with EQs or compressors, although you could do it. Um, I would typically put an EQ or a compressor or a limiter or any of those types of gain-based plugins directly on each track. Uh, but time-based plugins, it's common to use those in a send return routing situation like we've done here. Hope this helps.